He was the single greatest box office attraction of all time. He was the most loved and revered star America has ever known. For close to four decades, from the 1940s through the 1970s, John Wayne was one of the top ten box office draws every year. No one has ever come close to equaling this record, and it's safe to say that no one ever will. More than any other star in history, John Wayne symbolized America up there on the screen. He was a man of great character, dignity, and courage. He was strong. He was tough. And he was smart. And underneath his rugged exterior was a warm and caring heart. Both on and off the screen, Wayne always stood up for what he believed was right. We saw the Duke as the embodiment of all the values and beliefs that made America great, as a nation and as a people. Wayne himself truly believed what he was saying to us on the screen, so much so that the man he was and the heroes he portrayed merged into one and the same. He went on to become one of America's greatest heroes, and even more, a legend in his own time. A legend that lives on to this day. Born Marion Michael Morrison in Winterset, Iowa in May of 1907, his family moved to Southern California when he was eight years old. As a young boy, he owned a pet dog named Duke, and local firemen started calling the youngster Duke as well. It was a nickname that stuck with him his entire life. In high school, John Wayne was a star football player, and he played two years of college ball at USC before he cracked a shoulder and ended his career. It was, however, at USC that Wayne's team was used as extras in a film, and the Duke caught the acting bug. He started in the movie business as an assistant prop man in the late 1920s, and from there graduated to playing cowboy heroes in a number of B-Westerns. However, the name Marion Morrison wasn't quite right for a cowboy star. So director Raoul Walsh came up with the name John Wayne. John, because it was simple and straightforward and American. And Wayne, after the great American Revolutionary War general, Anthony Wayne. Through the 1930s, Wayne starred in over 60 films, mostly as a rugged cowboy hero. Duke was given his big break by the great director John Ford. As a director, a teacher, a friend, and a father figure, Ford had an enormous impact on Wayne's professional and personal life. In 1939, Ford cast Wayne as the Ringo Kid in the classic Western stagecoach. And from there, Wayne shot to stardom. Because he had such a strong screen personality, people often overlook the fact that Wayne was a very fine actor. In his 50-year career, he turned in some of the best performances in film history as Ethan Edwards in The Searchers, as Captain Nathan Brittles in the epic cavalry saga She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, as the American boxer who goes to Ireland to forget his past in the classic love story The Quiet Man, as Tom Dunson in Red River, as rugged Tom Donovan in The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, and as that ornery Marshal Rooster Cogburn in True Grit, for which he won his only Oscar. Wayne's last screen appearance came in 1976 in The Shootist. Duke plays an aging gunfighter who has outlived his era and who, ironically, is dying of cancer. Indeed, Wayne himself battled cancer twice in his life. The first time he beat it, but the second time it was too much, even for the Duke. In June of 1979, John Wayne died. The entire nation mourned the death of its greatest screen hero. During his final bout with cancer, John Wayne knew his time was short. Still, he exhibited remarkable courage. He accepted his fate bravely and silently, not wanting to burden his family and his friends with his ordeal. In the end, John Wayne was, like his screen character, a real American hero. Millions of words have been written about John Wayne, and no doubt millions more will be written. But perhaps the United States Congress said it best when, in the year of his death, they commissioned a memorial medal in his honor. The front of the medal features a bust of the Duke, and above his image are the words, John Wayne, American.
John Wayne was a hero and a screen legend. And now here's the story of another screen legend. Jimmy Stewart. For over five decades, one of America's best loved stars. Tall and lean, with an appealing drawl, easy going style and boyish good looks. Jimmy Stewart is truly one of the giants of American cinema. There is something innately American about Jimmy Stewart that appeals to all of us. Indeed, he is us up there on that screen. He is the common man. In him, we see ourselves. He has that special ability to make us feel what he is feeling, to see things through his eyes. Only a handful of actors in film history have possessed this unique quality, and Jimmy Stewart is one of those precious few. There's that Jimmy Stewart smile, that Jimmy Stewart walk, and of course, that endearing Jimmy Stewart draw. I, 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 Oh! Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, no, no. No, 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 no. How? How? I, uh, I, uh, what did, did you, uh, 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 uh just... Holy chihuahua! Born in the rural mining community of Indiana, Pennsylvania in April of 1908, Stewart was an amateur magician and accordionist as a young boy. He attended Princeton University and appeared in a number of stage productions for the Princeton Triangle Club. He graduated in 1932 with a degree in architecture, but was persuaded by classmate Joshua Logan to join the university players at Falmouth, Massachusetts. While there, he established a lifelong friendship with another hungry young actor, a man by the name of Henry Fonda. Stewart and Fonda moved to New York in the early 30s to pursue careers on Broadway. These were lean years for the young actors. Many times, when neither could find work, they subsisted on a diet of boiled rice and water. But Hank and Jimmy persevered, and after success on Broadway, both were signed to movie contracts. Fonda at Fox and Stewart at MGM. When Stewart first arrived in Hollywood, he was a puzzlement to casting directors. This gangling young man with his shy, country boy manner and hesitant drawl was by no means typical of Hollywood's leading men of the 30s. But producers and directors soon found out that Stewart had a unique and special appeal all his own. And within four years of his signing by MGM, Jimmy Stewart had become a major star. Through the late 30s and early 40s, Stewart turned in great performances in a number of classic films. Among them, You Can't Take It With You, Made For Each Other, It's a Wonderful World, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Destry Rides Again, and The Philadelphia Story in 1940, for which he won the Oscar as Best Actor. With the coming of World War II, Stewart enlisted in the Army Air Corps as a private. He flew 20 combat missions over Germany as a bomber pilot and upon his discharge had achieved the rank of full colonel. He became a member of the Air Corps Reserve at the conclusion of the war and retired a brigadier general in 1968. A major turning point in Stewart's career had come at the end of the Second World War. Having seen the horror and destruction of mankind's most brutal conflict, Stewart had second thoughts about acting being a worthwhile profession. But agent Lou Wasserman and director Frank Capra convinced him to return to the screen in the classic and heartwarming Christmas story, It's a Wonderful Life. And Stewart gave one of the greatest performances of his career. Hey, a minute, just, just a minute. Now, hold on, Mr. Just a minute. Now, you're right when you say my father was no businessman. I know that. Why he ever started this cheap penny ante building alone, I'll never know. But neither you nor anybody else can say anything against his character because his whole life was... Why, in the 25 years since he and Uncle Billy started this thing, he never once thought of himself. Isn't that right, Uncle Billy? He didn't save enough money to send Harry to school, let alone me. But he did help a few people get out of your slums, Mr. Potter. And what's wrong with that? Probably, 
Here, you're all businessmen here. Don't it make them better citizens? Doesn't it make them better customers? You, you said that they, what'd you say just a minute ago? They, they had to wait and save their money before they even thought of a decent home? Wait, wait for what? Until their children grow up and leave them, until they're so old and broke them down that the, the, you know how long it takes a working man to save $5,000? Just remember this, Mr. Potter, that this rabble you're talking about, they do most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. Well, is it too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms and a bath? Anyway, my father didn't think so. People were human beings to him, but to you, a warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. Well, in my book, he died a much richer man than you'll ever be. I'm not interested in your book. I'm talking about the building and loan. I know very well what you're talking about. You're talking about something you can't get your fingers on, and it's galling you. That's what you're talking about, I know. Well, I, I, I've said too much. I, you're, the, you're the board here. You do what you want with this thing. There's just one thing more, though. This town needs this measly one-horse institution if only to have some place where people can come without crawling to Potter. Back in front of the cameras, Stewart continued where he'd left off before the war, giving outstanding performances in numerous classic films over the next four decades. Films such as The Stratton Story, Harvey, No Highway in the Sky, Rear Window, The Man Who Knew Too Much, The Spirit of St. Louis, Vertigo, Anatomy of a Murder, and the man who shot Liberty Valance. Whether it be comedy, drama, suspense, adventure, or romance, audiences have always loved that Jimmy Stewart style. But perhaps his most outstanding attribute as an actor is the fact that he's so very watchable. No matter what he's doing, he's always captivating. Regardless of how good or bad a particular film is, Jimmy Stewart is always entertaining. Combination lot of it. Fitted up with brushes, oh, combs. No, 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 no. Now uh, uh, look, Joe. Now uh, look. I, I, I want a big one. What'd you stop it for? I want you to take a good look at that face. Ah. It's a good face. I like it. And indeed, America has always loved that face and that man. And always will. Jimmy Stewart a real-life hero, and an American original. watching American Movie Classics.